Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Why do I tell you Merry Christmas today? Because today, January 6th, actually the climax of the Christmas season. You see, back then the church didn't separate Christmas at Epiphany and Baptism of the Lord. There's only one celebration called the Epiphany. And a lot of our brothers and sisters from the Eastern Catholic Church celebrate Christmas today. As the theology developed, the three celebrations, some of the world have four, but most of them have three. The Nativity of Christ we call Christmas, the Epiphany of Christ we celebrate today, and the Baptism of the Lord tomorrow was celebrated all together called the Epiphany. And then all the part of the world, some of them all included the Feast of the Presentation of the Lord in the Temple, which we celebrate in February all into one. So Christmas didn't end on Christmas Day. Christmas begins on Christmas Day, and the Christmas season ends with the Baptism of the Lord. Today, the Feast of the Epiphany is the climax, is the high point of Christmas season. Of Christmas season. What do we celebrate Christmas? I want to start out with something probably Dr. Catherine, probably you know about it. For those who Google, I'm going to send you the hat. Okay? See, she has a degree on psychology. Those cuckoo people can go see her, all right? But anyway, one of the pretty well-known books out there, a lot of psychologists read that, and a lot of priests, we use it in counseling too, uh, called The Languages of Love, Five Languages of Love by Gary Chapman. As a person, you and I, we experience love differently, or how we see or perceive love differently. As a priest do meeting with couples struggle with their marriages, I see it all the time. One would come say, you know, Father, I do a lot. I try to save my marriage. I do a lot. But he just didn't seize that. You know why? Because what you send is not what he received. So when you send and you don't see, don't, you don't see any reaction from him, you push for more. And I'm going to give you an example of the five languages of love are pretty simple. Words, positive word. You're wonderful. Thank you. I know you could do that. You know, you know, it's okay. Those kind of things. Or they call word of affirmation. You affirm something positive. The second one, physical touch, hugs, you know, just a little things that you do. Those things like that. Physical touch. The third one is gift, and I don't need to explain that part. Uh, gift, a uh, gift. Uh, the fourth one is quality time, spending time together, okay? And the fourth one is uh, uh, act of service. You do something for them. So, I'm, you know, sometimes I put the test for the couple, and I look at the man or the woman, and I say, oh, dude, I feel so bad for you, because your spouse like all five of them. So it means you got to do everything. But most of us could have like one or two really high score on how you experience love, and the orders are lower. You really don't mind. For example, if David and Jolanda, John, and David's your last name, John and Jolanda, John language of love is physical touch. But Jolanda language of love would be, uh, let's say, quality times, okay? So now John, you know, hugs her like, no, I do this, and didn't see any response from her. So he thought he didn't do enough. So do more. You know what that happened, right? It drives Jolanda crazy. <laughs> now John said, you know, I did everything I could, right? But she, she, just, she just doesn't care for it. You see what I'm trying to say? You see what I'm trying to say? So Jolanda didn't experience and feel and understand the love John had for Jolanda. Now, since Jolanda has this quality time, and see her quality time could be different. Could be uh, spending time talking, you know? Could be spending time watching a movie. Or quality time would be like holding hand and pray, you know? 
And John, and she kept making John do it. And John said, Father, she, she doesn't understand me. You see what I'm trying to say? She just want me to sit there and, and do nothing. <laughs> you see what I'm trying to say? And they don't experience that language of love. Now, not I can, uh, Dr. Catherine and I, we can give a talk on that for young couple, for matchings and, you know, hope you'd understand. But that's not my homily, by the way. I'm starting that part. It's just an introduction. Five minutes. I got 20 more to go, okay? Now, I, I divide by into part. Now, that leads to this thing, the climax of Christmas, the epiphany today. You see, we all know how much God loves us. But he want to make sure that you understand you feel that. He tried to speak the language that you and I understand. He created you and me out of nothing. Knowing that how stupid we are and how screw up we sometimes could be. But he didn't care. He created us. He loved us. Just because he said a word. And it could be done. He could have sit up there, enjoy a cup of coffee in the last few cold days with his daddy. And say, I want Martina to be saved. I want Rick to be saved. I want Gary to be saved. I want... No, not you, but uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, you know, he could say anybody. You'd be saying. No, he didn't. Because he was worried that you and I would not understand and feel that love. So he do it in a way so you all of us can understand. He came down to be one of us, born of a woman, nourished by his mother, milk, grew up just like you and me. Walk in the same street that we walk. Experience the same temptation that you and I experience. You see how he does that? So that you and I can understand his love in our language, not in his most powerful language. He came down. And today, he want to make sure that it ain't just the chosen one. So the climax of Christmas season and the Feast of Epiphany, he want to make sure he can show himself to all people. You and me included, the Gentile. You see how his language of love here? That's how he loves us. Now, each and every one of us has a language of love, as I said, you know, it could be, let me make another couple, or uh, let me put on you, Tim, and, uh, oh, damn, how do I go black with your name? Lori, and Lori. Tim and Lori, Tim could be quality types, I don't know, you know? Lori could be gifts. And how did you match that? You know, because you have experienced that. So probably their language of love for both of them could be like spending quality time shopping, uh, buying gifts or something like that, I don't know. I mean, I just created that. That's how good is it that spending quality time so you get it by gifts, isn't that cool? Um, it's just like that. So what I'm trying to say is that each and every one of us has that thing that we can connect, that we understand. When you're in love, you know why you send that language of love. Most of the time when you are married, you send the language you want to receive, rather than the language the other person receives. You see? But when you send that, you too need to create your own language and make your commitment, your love strong. That bring me to today's climax of today's harmony. That's five minutes, I have 15 more at home. Just count it down. I'm, I'm learning how to make my times way. You know, I divide my house into three, four parts, and how many minutes I have each. Bring us to the climax today. The climax that you know how he loves you, that how you feel his love. Now, you need to go home and figure that out, because I can't do that. You need to know what is his language of love that he can experience from you. See what I'm trying to say? And then create for two of you, you and him, that language of love. Just you and him. I can't deal with that. Could be the language of love. He like you to pray a little more. I don't know. He wanted to spend a little time with him, I don't know. Maybe buying some gift for the poor, you know what I'm trying to say, I don't know. Could be the act of service, something to do for him, I don't know. Whatever that is, you and him need to make that connection. I'm just here to give you that 
introduction together. And that connection will help you to be what today we read in the second reading, the co-heirs of Jesus Christ. Now, what does it mean to be co-heirs? It means what? That heirs mean what? You inherit what the father left for his son, correct? And his son is Jesus Christ. Now we be a co-heirs of Jesus Christ. I want to make sure, and I said it many times in my homily, I want you to know what your daddy ever made. You pray, in another minute, we're going to say that in the creed. Let's say it now and say, I believe the Father. <laughs> now, what is our daddy all? Heaven and earth. That's all he did. I'm not glad he just owned that. This morning I asked at 8.30 mass. He said everything. I said, no, not everything. My daddy didn't own hells, and I don't want any part of that. He just, not only he's the rightful owner, he's the creator, the founder of heaven and earth. And that's what you and I, we call heirs. Heaven and earth. He didn't create hell. I, I'm so grateful because I don't want to own any part of that. Any of you want any part of that? You can go get it, but not me, okay? Don't call me. Don't tap me on the alarm. I don't want it. He owns heaven and earth. You and I would inherit what the co-heirs of heaven and earth. But we need to connect with that love. That love. You and him need to have that thing that two of you know. What I call is the digital key. Any of you use the iPhone 10? I got one, she's recording me right now. It's cool, it's the face. Recognition. And I try, because before I bought that, I want to make sure that my mom ain't get into my phone. <laughs> and hey, guys, if you ever want one, don't worry about your wife getting in your phones. When you sleep and your eyes close, your wife can't get in. If you put one eyes open and one eyes open or close, it's not coming in. Isn't that cool? And that's better than fingerprint because she can use your finger during your sleep, but not your face. <laughs> See, you can't. And if you open with your eyes, you sleep with your eyes, don't worry. Before you go to bed, draw something on your nose. They will not get it in. I did that now. I open my eyes, I stand it up, I draw something here, they're not accepting my face recognition. If I buy, uh, I just put a, a a pencil and buy a pencil, they not get it in. So before I go to bed, make sure you buy a pencil. <laughs> I said, what I call the digital key is that when, because of that connection, you and him met in that language of love. That key only you and him can recognize one another. You see what I'm trying to say? And that key gets you to heaven. When you show up at the heaven gate, you show that key, the gate will be automatically unlocked. Amen? Amen. Amen. But that, just you and him. I can't borrow, let you borrow that key. My face wouldn't recognize to open that gate. And I can't borrow your. Now, that's the climax of my homily. Now, let's get to the downfall of it. I still have 10 minutes left, right? That's 15. The next one is the downfall of my homily is this. I've been talking, this is my second homily of this year. And both of the homily you hear, I prefer to the word key. Last one, I talked about the key to have a holy family, correct? And everybody remember all of that? And this one I'm talking about the key to heaven. That's my pastoral vision of the harmony this year. Do you know the first two years I was here, I talked about stewardship. You hear that to the point probably you get tired of it. You hear I repeat that word over and over and over. Following God. This is my beginning, my fourth year here already. And last year, 
The key word last year, you remember, my key homily of last year was, this is Captain Martino speaking from the cockpit. Remember that, right? You don't forget that. And this is fly, take it off from St. Boniface to heaven, right? And this is, you know, sit back and enjoy the flight. If you don't go to heaven, please make sure you leave now or I will have to force you to go to heaven against your own will, right? And I set up in that was my first assist, my first officer would be Dick Rafter and being served by the leadership of the parish and all those things. Remember that homily, right? That's what last year, the third year. Why I'm giving you the key this year? Because I want to give you the key to get to that cockpit for this coming year. Next year, I'm going to train you to become the first officer. And when I leave this church, whatever that year is that is, each and every one of you is going to be the captain. Take that fly directly to heaven. Because I never ever want you. I want you to hear this clear and loud. I never ever want you to say, Father, it's not here anymore. I didn't feel this is my church. I didn't feel this. You now become the captain. This year, you get the key to the cockpit. That, what you call that, uh, safety door, you know, reinforced door. This year, you get that key to get in. You will be familiarized, familiar, yeah, that's too bad. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, you will be, uh, get used to, okay? That's probably an that easier word for me. Get used to what happened and the, all the buttons up there. And then the next few years, the leadership and I, we're going to train you to become an assistant, the first officer. And whenever, as I said, we complete that church and I leave this church, each and every one of you will be the captain taking that fly directly to heaven. And you know what to do. Until we meet in heaven. May everything we do give the glory to His name. Amen. Amen.